I got a question. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go here for a second, but we got to deal with this. 1455, Romanus Pontifex with uh, Pope Nicholas V. Okay, now this papal bull was given permission, I think, to uh, Spain to go out and capture to go out and capture slaves, you know, even those in, in Africa, right? He wrote a papal bull basically saying that capturing slaves and enslaving them was actually a good thing because these people are being brought to Christ up under the Roman Catholic Church. Now, at the end of the papal bull, this is what he says. He says, but anyone, but if anyone should presume to do so, basically, if anybody disagrees with what he with what he wrote. Um, but if anyone should presume, presume to do so, be it known to him that he will incur the wrath of God and of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul. Mm -hmm. So if anybody disagree with him at the time that enslaving people. Africans and um, and I forgot the, 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 the other um, some of the other areas that was mentioned inside of the papal bull if anyone disagrees with him that this is an act of piety an act of charity that person is accursed and this is written as a papal bull so are you guys telling me who are Roman Catholics that Pope Nicholas V was correct that enslaving people was an act of piety and charity because they were bringing them up under the subject, uh, the subjection of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, so uh, we have to uh, fact check that, and you know, yeah. go I got to pull the up. details um, of what um, he said. But hold up, hold up. Ahead. Before that, before that, um, so you believe um, Jesus was called the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, right? In Genesis, I kind of want to stick to this because to, to me, this is important. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is uh, relevant. Okay, yeah, Jesus was... I'm sorry, what was your question again? So, uh, Jesus was called the angel of the Lord in um, Genesis and Old Testament throughout, right? You believe that? Uh, Jesus is attributed to the angel of the Lord, but yeah, but I will have to okay. want to see where you're going. Okay, so... Um, Multiple times in Genesis and uh, in the New Testament, uh, especially in Genesis, uh, when Sarah's uh, um, slave, right, when she ran, uh, ran away, the angel of the Lord, he came down, who we, be we believe is Jesus, and he told her to go back to her master. Elijah. Yeah, yeah, I get your point, but you don't even have to go to the Old Testament. We, I mean, we have it in the New Testament. Our Lord himself says it in Ephesians 6, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Alton, we get your point, but, I mean. You... So, I mean, well, well, my my thing is, like, you, you see stuff like this throughout the Old and New Testament. So, I'm questioning why the Pope is doing this. Wait a like, minute. Wait what's a his minute. reason? Hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, let me get something straight. So, Alton is saying that this scenario was a situation where there were people being forced to Catholicism and they were being made slaves. Correct, Alton? This is the scenario? Yes, correct. Okay. So you brought us to the Bible to, to say what? You know, that Paul says, slaves obey your masters. Yeah, but that's not an endorsement of making people slaves. So if, if that's your proof text, you know what I'm saying? That's a stretch. I will much rather hear you guys say, and I'm not a Catholic. Yeah. You know, they were forcing people into slavery so they can accept Christianity. It was, um, it was wrong and we don't accept that. But if you're uh, going to try to endorse it by saying that Paul said, obey your uh, masters, you know, nowhere in the Bible does it endorse slavery. So I'm not saying you guys are, I, I'm not saying you guys are, are speaking for Catholicism. Maybe you guys don't know this argument and you guys are just shooting from the hip. Because if you guys uh, are going to tell me that you're endorsing people being made slaves so that they can be forced to accept Christianity... And then you're going to take me to the book of Romans where Paul said, obey your masters. 
and pretty much try to slide it in there to say that that's an endorsement of slavery, of what they were doing in the early Catholic Church. How can you guys critique the Muslims for doing the very same things? So I'm not saying this is Catholicism as a whole. What I'm saying is there has to be another answer to this question because this is not it. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, what I what I was saying was, uh, is he saying go back to your masters or is he like no, capturing new slaves? There, no, what he was saying is that there was a point in history. I don't know what this is, by the way. I'm not a history person. Alton is making the claim that there was a point in history where Catholics were forcing people to be slaves so that they can convert them to Catholicism. That is what he is saying. I don't a brother here said can you can you can you give the can you give the reference please because yeah there Alton, is a clear can you give context for that of course there is a clear context and I yeah hold on let me let me let me bring this up I, I'll go ahead and bring up because I got it on my slides but the I'm reason, gonna bring this and, up and Alton, the reason I'm, I'm I'm pressing the Catholics and everybody here is because we as Christians cannot endorse that behavior because that's that's a Christianity issue not a Catholic Orthodox Protestant pull that aside us as Christians there's no circumstance where we can endorse slavery. No, absolutely yeah. not. Right. So, Hold on a second. Let me see. Let's see the context of that quote, because maybe maybe right. you got it wrong. Maybe you didn't. So. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm gonna bring that up. I'm, I'm gonna bring yeah. it but up. But just the, just at the same time, you can find quotes that pro probably I'm just taking the hypothetical that the Catholic Church promoted slavery for whatever time period. I'm sure you can find quotes <laughs> as well where they rejected it as well, right? But exactly. Yeah. And, so, I can, and, what's and, the point here then? And that's and that's my and point. point? That is my that's that's what I wanted to get to. This is the crux of the matter, because if we have a, a, a pope who is writing this as a papal bull and he's saying one thing and in, in agreement with slavery. But then we have another pope and then we have some yeah. popes that come later mm -hmm. that disagree with that and saying that, no, this is wrong. Well, then. You is know, that a who, salvation who we, issue? Well, hold on. I can I can respond to this. There, there's still right. you're asking if forcing people to become slaves to accept Catholicism. If that's is a that a salvation? Issue? I mean, if it was a salvation issue, Paul wouldn't have told them to go back to their their masters, right? Well, I think we're, we're I think we're getting off on a tangent here. The question really is: Was oh, he forcing God. them to be slaves? Uh -huh. Is that actually in the document? Because that's not well, the well, case. Before we get well, there, wait, wait a minute. It's irrelevant. irrelevant. It's irrelevant now to... because it's on, irrelevant now because you guys just made an argument. Well, they made an argument. I'm not. I'm not okay. agreeing okay. with their argument. No, no, no. I understand you're not agreeing, Streffen. But this other yeah. person here is saying that Paul pretty much endorsed slavery. Yeah. Where, where no, is no that's not what I said. What I said okay. is like, you know, multiple times you can see, uh, you know, a teaching telling slaves to go back to their masters. I didn't no, say brother, make right. new brother, slaves and enslave maybe. them. Brother, respectfully, we know that in the Bible, right, when it talks about slavery, right, it's not talking about the African trade slave kind of slavery. It's talking about a slavery where people willfully became servants for a time to settle a debt. It's not talking about slavery like they're getting whipped and they're forced to be. In the Old Testament, it says that if you harm uh, one sorry. of these set slaves, you get the same equal punishment. And if you steal a slave, you get killed. Right. So it's Amen. no way it's no way endorsing slavery. When the Bible talks about slavery in the Old Testament, it's regarding to servitude. And often, uh, and often, and often, these slaves would opt in to remain slaves, and they would get citizenship as Jews. So, if right, you're going to sit here and say that the Bible endorses slavery, hold on. Yeah. No, 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 no. I want to hear what JP got to say. Yeah, if you're yeah, going to we'll bring here, it up, hold on. If you're going to sit here and say the Bible endorses slavery, for the sake of your Catholicism doctrine. Now you're giving space for atheists to say that the Bible teaches slavery and that therefore the African slave trade is justified. Do you see how deep this gets? Yeah, it's not a good look. That's a terrible argument, brother. Not even the other Catholic agrees with you. Let this one go, brother. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Alan. I mean, you're just using slavery in a different definition. Brother, that's I don't get the, point the context here. of slavery always was in the Old Testament. 
I'm not sharing the other context. I'm not defending the other context. Okay, so the brother, point is this: brother, in principle, slavery Alton, was promoted. Brother, brother, in principle, so the Bible promoted slavery. Whatever definition you, you just said, I let accept. Me slow this down for you, soul. The reason Alton is bringing up slavery is because it's being used in the other context, in the context where they were forced to be slaves so that they would convert to Catholicism. So therefore, it's different from what slavery was in the Old Testament. This is why Alton is bringing up the point. So Alton is going to bring up the article, and then you can refute the article and see if it's legitimate. I just don't understand the point. We can find articles and bulls going against slavery. So what's your point? Yeah, well, his his point, he's making the point that they're contradicting each other, but that's not actually. Yeah, but it's not a salvation issue. Right. And it, and sure, it, we're it, sinful it, men. Right. Wow, congrats, saying, you won something. <laughs> well, well, he's what he's trying to say here is they're, um, they're contradicting each other on definitive teaching, but that's incorrect because this was never definitive teaching. Uh, the papal statements here are not of universal application. They never had to be definitively held by all. All right, Catholics. can you guys exactly? So That's basically, these statements were addressed specifically to the Portuguese king Alfonso V. Okay, he was legitimizing Portuguese conquests in Africa and military campaigns against the Saracens in Morocco. All right, these well, were Muslims. These were Muslim pirates. Strengthened by God. That's problems. a better. That's a better response than what the yeah. heck concentrated soul was saying over there man because mm -hmm. this man was literally endorsing slavery bro i mean brother do you want to take a whipping with me brother not, uh, not, you, yeah man. not just that but consecrated you kind of try to double down on it don't yeah i, I wouldn't recommend try to double it, down man. on it and then pull a quick no, one. you guys are trying to run away from it no, what do you no, mean? Bro, i accept brother, the definition jp brother, said but don't don't run away direction. to say the bible didn't yeah, promote brother. slavery it did no 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 no, no. that's not what he the said the bible did dude that's brother, not what he said it did don't run away from it wait a minute actually ironically Chill, chill As out, a Protestant, chill you can't justify it, but bro. because without apostolic succession, brother, you can't claim it's brother, wrong. Right, brother, listen, calm down, bro. Without Take apostolic easy, succession, you can't Take claim it it's easy, wrong. Take it easy, brother. You're going to catch a heart attack, brother. Take yeah. it easy. Listen, you're gonna I, take I, it I, don't I run away. Together? Listen, consecrate. I sent you the link because I thought you, you know what I'm saying, you could be chilling here. But look, we're, 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 he did not deny that slavery isn't in the Bible. He is explaining to you what exactly slavery means. And I didn't reject that definition. Okay, then. So then why are you getting so defensive about it? Because he's saying that slavery doesn't exist in the Bible. Bro, that's I, not what that, he said. <laughs> that is what he said. Play it back. Oh, I didn't God. say that, brother. <laughs> but anyway, guys. Right, I'm going to head out, y'all. Yeah. Right, God bless you. Right, guys, let's uh, get through the topic. Let's, let's see you later, strength. Man. Strength by sure. God made a good point. Because, oh, he, he, like he ran, he said. He ran. He ran. No, strength by God didn't run. He's there. No, 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 not strength by God. The other guy, he ran. Oh. He got he got made a fool out of and he ran. Now, look, listen, I don't care if you're Orthodox, Catholic, or whatever the case may be. All I ask is that you be honest. That's it. So right. that's it. Just be but honest. I think strength by God gave an excellent response to that. No, he because gave a he... response that did not include the endorsement of slavery. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, but also the context. He gives the context to well, let's why allow it was not the universal to make thing. An argument. Let's allow Alton to make It was not the argument. universal thing. That's the problem. Yeah. You guys all right, Alton, make your argument universal. and you can share whatever you want to share. Yeah, that's all I was saying. Um, what was that? That papal bull was... And I mean, I've read through the whole papal bull. I mean, I got certain parts and sections cut out got in a powerpoint presentation all of that you know all i'm saying is that if people always want to point out the things that martin luther said john calvin zwingli okay yeah i get it i've even said that hey i got some problems with you know what i'm saying some of the things that the reformers of some protestants have said as well but it seems like and we just saw we, we just saw um, a prime example of it to where people have joined themselves together with the institution of the Roman Catholic Church to where they can't even say, you know what? I think that that was wrong. I don't care what nobody says. This is what I just personally believe. I believe it's wrong. I understand that I'm a part of the Roman Catholic Church, et cetera, et cetera. But some people act like that. They really have to defend everything that Rome does. And then when you start to bring some of this stuff out, now you look like the bad guy for even bringing this stuff out and then asking questions and saying, is this right or wrong? Yeah. Because if I'm supposed to be up under the Roman Catholic Church, right? All right. And this is supposed to be, 
uh, and I'm supposed to be up under them for salvation. If I'm examining this and I'm finding problems and issues, there's no reason to get defensive and try to brush it off like, oh, well, you know, you just stretching. It's just like, no, if I find an issue with this, can somebody turn around and say, you know what? Correct. No, you're interpreting that wrong. Let me spend some time with this guy to, to really break that down. Yeah, right, right, right. yeah, you can you can actually oh, yeah. come to the conclusion that the Pope was wrong in his opinion on that when he was talking to uh, the the Portuguese president there. That's totally fine. You, you can say I disagree with him on there. You can say I think he was wrong, just like yeah, you can but, disagree with Francis but, what he thinks about climate change. Yeah, but this Pope, like but but this Pope is saying that if you do not agree with what he's saying, the wrath of God is going to come upon you, and he's, he's writing right. it as a papal bull. Well, but my, my friend, there are other paper balls that uh, react on that. So the argument doesn't work in this sense because now we have one against the other. So um, because there are other balls that say the opposite. So what are you doing now? Right. So that's what I'm asking you guys, because Protestants get raked across the coal, the, the, the coals all the time for going against the uh, the Roman Catholic Church's abuses of the power. So Protestants is bad for doing that. But then now you're saying that, well, you can still disagree with the popes and the papal bulls and some of the things that, that may not make you feel good on the inside by reading it. But, oh, well, that's nothing. Well, we can all d agree to disagree. But then when it comes to the Protestants disagreeing on some of this stuff, well, then, you know, it's it's an issue. It, it, it's an issue with that. You, you can't do that as a Protestant. So it's just like where's yeah, the, the consistency? Thing, but this is different. This, this is the difference. When it comes to the when it comes to the product, most of the time it is a self salvation issue, and that's where the major major problem lies. I mean, I'm not like YP says. I like wait I said, a minute. I'm myself. I'm black. So uh, John, if <laughs> the wrath of God is going to be poured on you if you don't listen mm -hmm. to what the the manuscript says, right? Elton read mm -hmm. something that a pope said. Right. The Pope said that if you don't do this decree or whatever the heck it is, because I'm not an expert, but he said the wrath of God will be poured on you. Is that yeah. not a salvation issue? Can you pull that up? Can I just uh, read the that? The thing is, I yeah, want to see it. I've not seen the text yet. I'm going to pull it back up. Let me, let me pull it back up. He, 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 he said the wrath of God will be poured on you or someone will be anathema. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know what the text is. So I No, yeah, we'll pull it up. We'll pull it up. Okay. Yeah. And the same language is used in, in other statements as well. So. That's all concerning. Right. Yeah, that not in all that, statements, but in certain statements. No, because that would mean that that yeah. person, that pope, is telling me to enslave people to make them uh, Catholics, because if I do not, then the wrath of God will be poured into me. Yeah, so that is a salvation too, issue. You are too fast, GP. I want to see first before you make well i'm saying if what the text is say, if the text is saying what he's saying that's what i'm saying right now this paper book it's a lot to go through and like i said i you know i got certain slides and stuff that i've clipped because it's a lot and they got this so jumbled and, and bunched together it's kind of hard to try to go to a specific spot but this is what this is the end of the bull right here okay now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to read the introduction and I'm going to have to go back to this site to see if they change some things because I got <laughs> I got a slide where I clip from this particular website. Yeah, and but now you backing and, up, dude. You just No, no, no. Hold on. Okay, let let me just read it. Therefore, let no one in French uh or with rash boldness uh contravene this our Declaration, Constitution, Gift, Grant, Appropriation, Decree, Supplication, Exhortation, Injunction, Inhibition, Mandate of Will. But if anyone should pre presume to do so, be it known to him that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul given at Rome at St. Peter's on the 8th day of January in the year uh, of the incarnation of our Lord, 1,400 and 54 in the eighth year of our pontificate all right i have a question for you where does yes, it sir. reference any point to about slavery because where is the point here about slavery i don't see it hold on one second 
Let me see if I can bring this up because I can bring this up easier on my PowerPoint. Yep. And, re and remember, the people that they're dealing with here are Muslim pirates who are kidnapping and enslaving people themselves. Those are the people who are the subject ah, that the Portuguese the leader is dealing with. Thank you for the context. Hey, listen, war is war, right? Yeah. No, it's in a context of war. All right, hold Come on. on man. Be honest then as well. That hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 hold on. Take your time, brother. As soon as you share it, I'll put it on. All right, All right this is one of the slides uh, that I got. Now, this is from the bull itself. Okay. We therefore weighing all and singular the premises with the due meditation and noting that since we have formally by other letters of our uh, granted of ours granted among other things free and ample facility to the uh, aforesaid King Alfonso to invade, search out, capture, vanquish and subdue all Sacreans and pagans whatsoever and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed in the kingdoms dukedoms principalities dominions possessions and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possession by them uh and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to apply the appropriate to himself and his successors the kingdoms dukedoms countries principalities dominions possessions and goods and to convert them to his and their use for profit by having secured the said faculty, uh, the said King Alfonso, or by his authority, the aforesaid Infante, uh, uh, justly and lawfully, has acquired and possessed and doth possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas, and they do of right, of belong, and pertain to the king, to the said King Alfonso and his successors nor without special license from King Alfonso. And, it, and it, it continues to go on. Um, and his assessor themselves have any, you know, uh, other of the faithful Christ and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read the rest of it, but you kind of get. So what is he commanding here? Just in short. Basically, this is um, he's giving King Alfonso. And let, let me pull this back up because this is what it says at the beginning yeah, he offed himself, man. He oh. clicked off the wrong. <laughs> uh, brother, just click the link again, brother. It's in, the fa in your Facebook. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll definitely look into that. You know. Well, well even then, then even then, this is this is this is my thing because some some other people um are saying that even even if this is the case, this is just from one individual pope. How do you guys respond exactly. to that? No. How exactly I, do you guys I, respond I, to it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not Catholic. Uh, as far as I understand, like a, a papal bull, it's authoritative, but it's not infallible in the sense it's not like a, a dogma that's to be believed at all times and in all places. So I can't see how this would apply to a Catholic today. No, because first of all, it's not a universal thing. So uh, yeah, you're, I, basically mm. what you're saying is that this is something that's only applicable to its current context which was a particular war that was going on, correct? Exactly. Yeah, because it wasn't you know, it, it's thing. like it's like this when the um, when all the Reformed Baptists defend Jonathan Edwards for owning slaves, they say you know he was a man of his times. So wait, so essentially, this is not a Catholic dogma. So therefore, you don't have to listen to it. Correct? Is that what your arguments? Yeah, a, a papal bull, as I understand it. Like I said, I'm not Catholic, but. It's an authoritative declaration, but they're used for like all different types of things. But it's not an infallibly defined dogma. It's not like the Marian dogmas or you know exactly Christology. All right, thank you for that, brother. Now, now this is I wanted to bring this up and 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 strength. If you want to help, me. I mean, not not to help me out in the sense you know what I'm saying to bring anybody down, but the the point that was that was made earlier by the other guy that left you clearly well, saw Colin, you, Berto, this is colin the calvinist let's read this real quick brother and then we'll let you cook yeah. all right brother colin brooks said that's not a good answer because it raises the key question how does a person know when a papal bull is infallible 
what's the criteria and where does it come from is there any infallible let's get this straight just the give pope, me yes or no. yeah the pope are there any be... infallible papal bulls are there any infallible ones i'll let them answer that but i don't think any papal bull is infallible oh okay. when it comes to faith and morals uh, it could be infallible yeah. okay so there could be um but only when it comes to like faith and morals and okay, um, so I'm, I'm doing a, a scheme of like the, this papal bull and uh, I don't think it, it, I, it's not, it's definitely not a, an infallible teaching. All right. All right. Um, and you're a hundred percent. Go ahead, Berto or Alton. Right. Yeah, no, because they're, they're saying that it's not infallible. So what's the point of even writing a papal bull if it's not infallible, if you just turn around and disagree with it anyway? Because no, it's, still, it's authoritative. But again, I'll, I'll let the Catholics answer. But from my understanding, um, there's a handful of infallibly defined dogmas in the Catholic Church. So essentially what you're saying is that this is infallible or authoritative for a time, but then... Yeah it no longer is so yeah. i guess this comes back to alton's point alton point still stands. Well, no. i mean clearly let me this tell you why. Let, me tell you why. let me tell you why because even if this is now expired if alton were living at that time period and he said no to that paper bull right mm -hmm. if he said no the wrath of god would be upon him so therefore it is a salvation issue but now it's not anymore it's 2024. Yeah, it but just it seems like strong alive. language. Huh? Could in that current state of that paper bull, um, could it have been infallible? Or Maybe not infallible or fallible? So yeah. when something is infallible, it, it doesn't stop at a certain time. It goes, you know, throughout. So yeah. if you say this is infallible, then the Catholic Church to this day we'll have to hold to the position slavery is good that, okay, but, that's, what, that's what i'm asking you guys that's what i'm asking you guys because you guys said that it's not infallible meaning that that paper bull in that current time could have been fallible yeah it's it's authoritative okay. in the sense that the pope has jurisdiction over other bishops and at this time not just over bishops but even other leaders in europe so the the leaders in europe are actually listening to what the pope tells them to do now nowadays the pope doesn't operate in this way so this was a specific time when they actually listened to the pope's opinion and his authority on certain issues like wars going on in their area so yeah it would be a temporary authoritative uh statement but it so has it is no a salvation period. issue then no it's i wouldn't say it's a salvation issue brother but the wrath of god will be upon you if you didn't do it yeah, that doesn't that doesn't mean it's a salvation issue. If something is what? sinful, right? If something hold on, if something is sinful, if some people are doing some sinful things, the wrath of God could be upon them here on earth. That doesn't mean they're not uh that doesn't mean they're not they're not gonna be saved. I hear you, Elijah, but I'm not I'm not eating that one, brother. But I hear you, brother. I'm just I'm not eating, brother. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I can yeah. I can't I mean, swallow I that one, brother. Listen, brother, I don't know. It, it, I, I love it my could Catholics be hyperbole. Orthodox, brother, I love my Catholics and Orthodox, and I consider myself really fair. That's one I'm not swallowing. <laughs> when the Bible talks about the wrath of God, yeah, it don't talk clear about it what it's there. talking about. So yeah. yeah. So I hear you, brother. Good argument, good try. I'm not swallowing. I, I'm gonna read this real quick and I and I gotta get off. Um you know, and, and I really appreciate the conversation. I gotta get out of here as well, brother. All right, so uh, this is the background of this papal bull. The kingdoms of Portugal and Castile have been jockeying for posi uh, for position and possession of colonial territories along the African coast for more than a century prior to Columbus's discovery. "Quote unquote." They put that in quotes. Uh, the lands uh, in the Western Seas. On the theory that the Pope was an arbiter between nations, each kingdom had sought and obtained papal bulls at various times to bolster its claims on the grounds that its activities served to spread Christianity, served to spread Christianity. The bull Roman Pontifex is an important example of the papacy's claim to spiritual lordship of the whole world 
and of his role, uh, I'm sorry, and of his role in regulating relations among Christian princes and between Christians and unbelievers, um, heathens, and infidels. This bull became the basis uh, for Por Portugal's later claim to the lands in the New World, a claim which was countered by Castile and the bull uh, Inter Catia in 1493. An English translation uh, of Roman Pontifex is produced below, um, and that's that's basically it. They're just saying that this was, uh, you know, the information of how it was translated and all of that. But that's basically what the papal bull was about, you know, granting Portugal, um, you know, th th basically granting them the, the, a green light to go ahead and start claiming lands and enslaving people and then saying that they were doing God's work by bringing people to Christ in the process. So this is why this particular papal bull was written. You see what I'm saying? And all well, I'm saying did, is that... And I, did say, go ahead. They did say that the Muslims... Um, well, we're doing the same thing so they were they were uh you know fighting fire with fire but that's just for mm -hmm. some context you were gone at that point so carry on brother yeah and, and all i'm saying is that i'm not putting this on every roman catholic and i'm not saying that every roman catholic believes this or holds to this but what i'm pointing out because even me myself and god you know i, I might have to play the race car for a minute <laughs> but me as a black man I've called out the racism in Protestantism. There's no question about it. We had some racist Protestants that left Europe, came to America, and said that, hey, we're going to escape the, the, the rule of the Roman Catholic Church, and we're going to start this country over here in America. And, you know, it's supposed to be equal up under God. Uh, every man's going to be created equal, this, that, and the third. And then they turn around and start enslaving black folks in this country as well. And I called that out. So don't to, I don't want anybody to get it twisted. Like I only have that energy for Roman Catholics and papal bulls and stuff like that. No, I'm, I'm going to address evil whenever it arises as ugly head, because the Bible uh, specifically tells us in Exodus that if anyone steals a man and sells him, a the person who sold that man is going to be put to death and b the person who was found in possession of that man is going to be put to death as well. So if anybody is, you know, uh, uh, supporting any of that, I really suggest that somebody go back to the Bible and understand what that part, what, what that passage is saying. I think it's at uh, Exodus, what was it? Exodus 21, 16 or Exodus 21, 24, somewhere around there. I know it's in Exodus 21, but all I'm saying is that be consistent. Right is right, wrong is wrong. I don't care if you call yourself a Roman Catholic or a Protestant or whatever. You know, let's let's deal with some of this stuff because just like Protestants have a lot of blood on their hands, we have way more blood. I mean, the, the Roman Catholic Church have way more blood on their hands than the Protestants. So let's just be clear on that. Hey, thank you guys for watching the video. Go ahead and hit that like button. And if you like this particular content, hit that subscribe button as well if you have not done so. Also, check out this most recent video that I've done right here, or check out some of these other videos that I've done concerning the same topic. All right, you guys have a blessed day.